What's going on, everybody? It is April 10th, Tuesday slate. We've got one game every half hour up until the late game. Uh, lots of slop out there. Not the best. Uh, it's very clear that the NBA is, is going to pack it in tomorrow. Um, we're going to try to wade through it as much as I can, but I feel like uh, the dude from Dirty Jobs because uh, this is filthy. Let's just get into it. Why not? Indiana Pacers hosting the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Pacers, six and a half point. Is that the right math? It is the right math. Six and a half point favorites at home against the Hornets. Um... This one's going to be a tough one. You know, I don't I don't expect all of the main guys for any of these playoff teams to be playing super big minutes. So it's going to be an interesting balance to be able to get um, the right amount of value. Like Oladipo at 9,200 right now, 9,300 on DK. Like I just don't, you know, I think you can play 30 minutes, but I don't think there's any scenario where he plays 35 or something like that. So... Very little interest in Oladipo. Um, very little interest in anything really on the Pacers. I I don't see a ton of like crazy upside. Someone's gonna get some additional time. I don't know if that's gonna be you know someone like Sabonis who played 38 minutes in their most recent game, or you know maybe Corey Joseph gets a couple extra minutes, but. For right now, I'm going to have a hard time focusing on Indiana. Charlotte's well coached, so like it doesn't strike me as that sort of game, although Indiana does have the third highest implied total. Um Yeah, I'll I'll just I'll likely have very little Pacers action tonight. Um there are places where there's a lot more value, games that matter a little bit more. Uh this doesn't really land there. For the Hornets, uh 105.5 implied total, which is 8th uh, they are not in the best matchup here, but there's a couple things that I think stand out. Uh, Willie Hernan Gomez is 4,400 on DraftKings. Uh, he played 24 minutes in the most recent game. I'd expect that you know he probably sees a bit more minutes. You know, like I've got him in for 23, but there is upside there for Hernan Gomez to just see a bunch. Like if Dwight just sort of packs it in, um, they could. They could get Hernan Gomez up into like the 27, 28 minute range uh, if things break well. You can see in the last game for uh, the Hornets, just everybody playing. It's basically like two shifts. Everybody just playing different chunks of 20 minutes. So again, it's it makes it hard to really go after someone. You need someone to be highly efficient in a short amount of minutes. Um, so I'd be willing to look at Kemba. I know he's only playing like mid twenties minutes, but he's only six thousand on FanDuel, so that I think is a worthwhile gamble. Um, Kemba on FanDuel, Willie Hernan Gomez on DK. You know Hernan Gomez is okay on FanDuel, but the price on DK is just phenomenally better. Uh, I think you could probably take a peek at Frank Kaminsky, particularly on DK, where he's under four thousand. You know it's hard. It's it's hard to really feel comfortable with anything here. Um, but those are those are sort of my the things that I like coming out of Charlotte. For the Hawks, 105 implied total. They're nine and a half point underdogs at home against the Sixers. Uh, not a lot going on that's going to be interesting here for uh, the Sixers at least. But for the Hawks. Um, you know, I think Torian Prince looks pretty good at 6,500 for FanDuel. Uh, played 39 minutes in their last game, put up 51 fantasy points. I'd be fine looking there. I don't really love him as much on DK at that price. Uh, you can look into Damian Lee if you need to. Uh, you can look into Dwayne Dedman if you need to, particularly on DK. Um, John Collins on DK looks significantly better than he does on FanDuel. Um, yeah, lots to like here for Atlanta, who only have so many guys they could actually play. Uh, any one of those first four guys are perfectly fine with me. And then, um, you know, if you want to grab Muscala or Isaiah Taylor on DK, I think that's possible as well. Just Philly, uh, 
Philly's going to try to win. Um, I don't know if they need it for the tiebreaker or not. I just know that they are projected to be ahead of Cleveland by a game. So Philly wins here. They should be the three seed set up nicely to face Boston in the second round. Um, but yeah, uh, you, I think you can safely grab a few Hawks, particularly on DK. Uh, I like the pricing a lot. For the Sixers, uh, 114.5 implied total is second, which makes me a little interested here. Um, I would have thought that they would have dialed it back a little bit, but who knows? Uh, Simmons is 10-5, 10-7 on DK. I feel like that's a bit of a struggle just because of this sort of game. I, it doesn't strike me as the type of game where they're going to run him into the ground. Um, you know, he's going to have either the Bucks or the Heat coming up in a couple days. So I wouldn't expect like the full allotment of Ben Simmons tonight. Not like the 36 minutes he got against the Cavs um, this past weekend. So. You know, I'd, I'd, I would try to limit myself to Ben Simmons tonight just because of this game being so meaningless. Um, Covington is probably a bit too expensive. Same sort of scenario. 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Uh, I like him a little bit more than Simmons. He's been playing phenomenally well uh, with Embiid out. Bunch of couple 40-point games, a 50-point game. Um, I don't mind necessarily looking there. I think, like, you know, Saric on FanDuel looks pretty appealing at 6,000. Um, you know, you can make a case for Fultz on DK. FanDuel a little bit, but 3,800 for Fultz on DK. Could see a couple extra minutes here as they're stretching him out against Atlanta. Uh, it's just really hard to commit because I think everybody's starting to shave those minutes, but the pricing doesn't sort of change as much. So for me... Very small amount of Ben Simmons. Uh, slightly more than small amount for Covington. Next is, you know, Sarge probably more than Covington. And then uh, I think Fultz works as a decent flyer. The Wizards. Uh, 106.5 implied total, which is sixth. They are six and a half point favorites at home against the Celtics. Um... You know, I expect Wall to play here. Uh, 9,200 for Wall on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Uh, I, I don't have any problems at all having some John Wall tonight, particularly on DraftKings. That $8,500 price point is, is very nice. Wall uh, went for 56.8 fantasy points on April 5th, so, you know, it's in him right now. Uh, I think that's worth a look. Um, I don't want any part of Beal on FanDuel, but on DK at 7,400, I think that's appealing. Uh, Otto Porter looks like he would be fine. You know, you don't have a ton of options on this six-game slate. Uh, there are some additional options in these later games, but I like Wall a lot. I like the big three from Washington on DraftKings. Uh, anything outside of those guys is probably not for me. Um... You know, you can roll the dice on Kelly Oubre, uh, but that's probably more of a strictly GPP play. Boston. 100 point implied total is dead last of the 12 teams that play tonight. Uh, they're going to be just spreading everybody out. They're locked into where they are. Um, not a lot to play for. So don't expect big minutes coming out of anybody unless like something weird happens and Kadeem Allen has to go for 50 minutes or something like that in some quadruple overtime joint. Uh, I think Jalen Brown is worth a peek on FanDuel. He's 5400 He's uh, $900 more expensive on DraftKings, so you don't want to play him there. Uh, but, I mean, that's about it. I... Everybody's going to be playing these weird chunks of minutes. And, you know, it's it's hard to be confident if Baines plays 20 or Monroe plays 20 or Jabari Bird plays 20. I mean, I've got him in for six. But uh, I think Jalen Brown is the only guy that I would have any interest in on FanDuel. Um, you know, you can probably look at, like, Greg Monroe on DK. But there, I don't see a lot to like in Boston. There's a reason they have the 100-point implied total and they're dead last. It's just not the spot. Now, a little bit more value to be found. 
the Dallas Mavericks with a 110.25 implied total, which is fourth. They uh, are five-point favorites at home against the Phoenix Suns. Uh, lots to like here. A lot of dudes sitting out for Dallas. We're not going to have any Harrison Barnes tonight. Um, Jonathan Motley at 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Uh, Motley played 40 minutes a couple nights ago, went for 47 fantasy points. Looks like a great option again tonight. Should be able to soak up as many minutes as he needs um, in the post. Uh, I've got Motley grading out uh, really, really nicely. Definitely someone that I'm going to have a lot of. Uh, Dennis Smith, 6,400 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, Smith looks like an an absolutely exceptional play on FanDuel at that price point. Uh, You know, the whole team's going to run through him. I like him still on DK at 7,300, but at at FanDuel price, you're doing backflips. $900 cheaper on FanDuel. His equivalent price on DK would be like 56, 5700. So uh, that's how good of a play Dennis Smith looks like tonight. I'm fine with Dwight Powell on FanDuel. Uh, 4700 is amazing. Um, that's probably the extent of it all. Uh, nobody else is grading out as any sort of really crazy value. You could take shots on you know someone like Jalen Jones in a GPP. Or, you know, maybe Aaron Harrison, if you really want to get wild in a GPP, um, if he plays. But for me, it's Motley and Smith, particularly uh, Smith on FanDuel. Uh, Smith on FanDuel is probably the best play of the night. The Suns. 105.25 105.25 implied total. Five-point underdogs in Dallas. Uh, their implied total is ninth. Um, you know, another team that's just an absolute morgue. So you really need to pay attention to any news, figure out who the starters are later. I'm taking my best shot now, you know, trying to grab the guys that are going to play. Not expecting to see Jackson or Peyton or Booker or Warren. So here... Um, or I am expecting to see Jackson, rather, sorry. I'm not expecting to see Booker or Warren or any of those guys. You know, they're probably done. No Peyton. Uh, I think Jackson looks okay. The DK price isn't bad. You just got to make sure that he's going to be on the floor. Uh, Daniel House, 4,300 on FanDuel. Played 45 minutes two nights ago. Uh, 35 minutes of the game before that. He's at 4,300. Uh, no-brainer b- value play. Uh, so long as you know that he's going to be on the floor tonight. Um, got to have a lot of him. Uh, I think Bender at 4,300 on FanDuel looks pretty nice. Uh, played 41 mm-hmm. minutes in the last game. Um, that's a price point I'd like to take a look at. If Marquise Chris plays, I think that he looks pretty nice at 5,900, but you want to keep an eye there. Didn't play in the last game. And then uh, Alex Len, again, FanDuel, 4,600. Uh, always worth a look, particularly against Dallas. Uh, Len's not going to be too worried about Motley. So um, at that sort of price, tons of value in this game uh, all over the place. It's scary value. You know, you shouldn't be super confident in any of these guys. But um, you're going to have a lot of roster construction coming out of either Dallas or Phoenix. The Jazz hosting the Golden State Warriors... Jazz 110 implied total, which is fifth. Seven and a half point favorites at home uh, against the Warriors. Uh, by everything that I've read, you know, I think the Warrior or the Jazz are going to have a full allotment of, of guys here. They might not run it totally into the ground, but I think this is going to be played relatively straight up on their end. So Gobert at 9,000, 8,100, I think looks like a really nice play. Um, just have to be a little wary of the minutes, but I think he's going to get some run here. Uh, pay attention, though. You know, if we see any news about minutes limits, you really want to readjust. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I think, is perfectly acceptable as a play. You know, went for 52.8 in his last game, played 38 minutes. He's just getting a ton of run, getting a ton of shots. So worth a look there. Um I'm fine with coin flip plays on Joe Ingles. You know, I know I don't ever feel like I get him right, but went for 46.8 in his last game. 
Um, I think he's worth at least a peak. I think favors grades out really nicely. Uh, could see a couple extra minutes if you don't want to play Gobert. You know those minutes could be uh, minutes that get soaked up by Derek Favor. Six thousand on FanDuel, fifty five hundred on DK. I definitely think he's worth a look as sort of a value play here. Um, and then Jay Crowder actually forty three hundred on FanDuel, uh, forty five hundred on DK. Played thirty minutes and got twenty eight fantasy points in his most recent game. Had twenty nine fantasy points uh, on April third. He's playing a couple extra minutes right now, and I think at that price he's worth a look, particularly on a slate like this. But lots to like for the Jazz. Um, not a ton of reasons to be worried about this Golden State team right now. Now, for the Warriors, uh, this one's interesting. You probably want to, to make sure you pay attention. Um, we might not have the news we want by 7 o'clock, but... You know, this could this game could get funny. It's it's possible people sit out here. Uh, I don't really want a ton of clay, but on FanDuel at 6,100, I don't think that you can get away from him, at least for a look, um, unless we hear something very specific about this game. I don't really love playing against the Jazz. They're obviously an exceptional defensive team, but uh, clay is underpriced right now at FanDuel, and I think that you need to pay attention to him a little bit. I don't have any real interest in Quinn Cook at that price point. Um, I could get into some Draymond at 7,600, 77 on DK. He looks a little bit better on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's worth a little bit of a look so long as we don't get any weird news. Uh, KD at 11 2, 10 8 on DK. Not really my favorite play in the world, but there's not a ton to pay up for. Uh, particularly at that position. So I might end up with more Durant than I would like tonight, uh, but I don't really trust it. So I'm hoping that roster construction can look a little bit different um, when I go to get into it. Final game. I know we're moving through this fast, but it's really hard to provide uh, a ton of healthy thoughts on the second to last day of the regular season with all of the shenanigans that are going on. Um, Lakers hosting the Rockets. Uh, Rockets are nine-point favorites in LA. Lakers with a 106.25 implied total, which is seventh. Um, possible we see Lonzo tonight. He is questionable. I've got him in for 26 minutes, so he's not someone you want to play if he's playing with a minutes limit. Um, his price isn't down at all. Uh, I think you can look at Josh Hart, 5600 on FanDuel, 5900 on DK. Hart played 41 minutes uh, two nights ago. Played 32 minutes, 34 minutes, 35 minutes. So if he gets that allotment, he should be fine. Uh, one of the safer plays for the Lakers. Julius Randle at 7,800 uh, doesn't seem to be the spot. I think they're going to trim his minutes now. Uh, going to be hard to get up to that the value mark at 7,800. Then Kuzma. Um, didn't play in the most recent game. I do have him in here playing 29 minutes, but you'll want to keep an eye if he can play, I'm okay with him at 6,000. I don't think he's very playable at 7,000 on DK, but I think it's worth a look um, if we can get confirmation that he's going to play. Other than that, I mean, you're, you're rolling the dice on guys like, you know, if you think Tyler Ennis is going to get minutes, you can take a shot there. Price is probably a little bit prohibitive. Uh, I don't really want any part of, like, Brooke Lopez. Um... You know, Channing Fry got 23 minutes in the most recent game. Doesn't strike me as the type of guy I would want, but at 3,400, like if you're looking for weird GPP plays, could be a could be a spot. Finally, the Houston Rockets 115.25 implied total, first on the slate, which is kind of amazing, but it's mo mostly just a testament to the Lakers. Um, who knows what kind of news we have by 10 for this game you know 10 30 tip off as of right now i think everybody plays they just play muted minutes um so i think ariza for 4200 on fanduel is a guy that i want to take a nice look at particularly at that position it's a little bit uh less desirable on dk um i can't imagine playing chris paul or james harden uh, these guys are Priced like normal, but not going to play like normal. At least I wouldn't expect it to. Um, I have them both playing under 30 minutes. So you would need a very efficient night 
I'd be more likely to play Paul than Harden just because of the prices. Um, Capella, 7,300 and 7,200. He's someone I'd actually be a little bit interested in because it's not as if he plays crazy, crazy minutes regularly. Um, so I would take that shot. Houston with an okay matchup for centers. Um, other guy I would look at would be, on FanDuel at least, Gerald Green, 4,600 on FanDuel. Has the opportunity to soak up some additional playing time. Um, you know, I could see him playing a lot in the fourth, and he clearly has no aversion to shooting. So I think Gerald Green makes a nice GPP play on FanDuel tonight. There's no telling what this looks like when I dump the projections in, but I have a feeling there's going to be way more guys that I have no interest in popping up. <laughs> Just because you have to spend the salary somewhere. I'm excited to get into baseball with, like, reckless abandon now. I mean, you know, uh, playoff NBA is fine. It's, it's at least significantly more predictable, but I'm just tired of talking about some of this awful, awful basketball that's going on. Let's see what we get on FanDuel. Yeah, that's an overwhelming amount of Chris Paul, but I think that's just a sign of, like, how little high-end guys are out there i'd have a lot of trouble playing him but let's grab motley let's grab dennis smith because i don't think there's a way around that uh i would then want to grab house um i think wall would be the smarter play there i think Derek favors is someone i would want to have a part of that gives me 12 lineups um Can't, I don't want to go to Durant, so I think Trevor Ariza at that price on FanDuel would be my interest. So that would be Wall, Smith, Mitchell, House, Motley, Ariza, Collins, Favors, Gobert. I don't love that. I would probably try to get down off of Gobert if I was going to have Mitchell and Favors. Um, but it's going to be a tough build. I love the Wall, Smith piece. I love the... Uh, the Motley Ariza piece. Um, I love the favors piece. Builds are going to be interesting tonight. Um, there's going to be so much news that comes down through the day. Really need to pay attention to that sort of stuff. Uh, it will dictate basically everything that you need to do as we find out what teams are going to be scratching people. So really pay attention You know, during the day around shoot around time see who starts coming out. Uh, that'll be the time where we're going to start dropping rankings and stuff, so you'll want to pay attention there. We'll check out DK, add some randomness in. Who knows where this one goes. A lot of Hernan Gomez, a lot of Motley. Let's grab Motley. Let's grab Hernan Gomez. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to grab Wall. Who's grading out the best for DK? It's Wall. We want to grab... We'll grab Dennis Smith. Grab Dwayne Dedman and we'll pick it up from here. Probably not going to go with the Wiz stack here. Um... I think this middle lineup would be fun. Wall, Shaq Harrison, Covington, Deadman, Willie Hernan Gomez, Dennis Smith Jr., Motley, and Gobert. Uh, I would like that one the most out of everything that is on the screen. Whew. NBA is rough tonight, guys. Just be prepared for uh, a lot of sadness. You're either going to love some like 12th guy on I don't know, the Hawks, and he's going to be like your new favorite player or you're going to want to just stab CP3 or somebody that you play and they just play like eight minutes and go grab a shower. So that's all I've got. Um, you know, like and subscribe to the video if you like this video and the channel. Um, follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. I'll be back tonight starting at six for a live show with uh, the co-host Chris Spaggs. Um, we'll be talking basketball, baseball, random stuff, Monday Night Raw from last night, 
all, all the stuff you love to hear about in a DFS show. Um, head to awesomeo.com today. We'll have rankings out for FanDuel, DraftKings, Slam Dunks articles. If you want to be playing baseball, we have content out for baseball. Pay attention to the channel. We'll have uh, the baseball strategy video coming out in the near future with myself and Jake Hari. Um, yeah, just tons of content coming out at awesomeo.com. So you really want to, uh, you know, follow follow the awesomeo.com Twitter account. It's awesomeo underscore com. Uh, same as this channel. And yeah, uh, that, that's all you want. Just get all of our stuff. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, best of luck tonight. And I'll uh, talk to you guys again tomorrow morning for the final day of the NBA regular season. Bye-bye.